So we are going to head straight into three short presentations. Um, and I'm going to first turn the floor over to Nakomo Morris, who teaches at Quest to Learn. Nakomo. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Um, before I get started, I just wanted to give you some background so you have a sense of where I'm working from, like who I'm working with. Um, I'm a seventh grade English and humanities teacher um, at Quest to Learn, which is a games-based learning school. Um, we don't just play games all the time. We just occasionally play um, games, usually paper games, sometimes video games. Um, but because we like to use video games when it's um, appropriate, we are a very tech heavy school if we want to be. Um, so we have a lot of access to a lot of technology. Um, we have an IT department, like we're, we're lucky in this way. That said, our kids are still kids, and when it comes to poetry, they are scared. Um, so what I'd like to do is I want to show you about, um, a couple of things that have worked for me um, that have made it easier to discuss poetry here during National Poetry Month. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to show you some stuff that I'm doing. Um, here we go, desktop. Sorry, guys. Okay, so. Um, so here is my screen that I show to kids every time. First of all, we use Google Meet. Like, can everybody see, first of all? Can everyone see my screen? Um, so we use Google Meet. And uh, I use the same basic uh, screen set of slides every single day. Um, we don't call it weekday, it's the actual day of the week. Um, and we say that it's Poetry Month. Um, before I get started though, I wanted to put this out to everybody. This is from a guy um, who actually was told to me, was uh, introduced to me by another guy who's actually working with another teacher who's gonna be presenting. Um, the idea behind talking about poetry is not to get to the bottom of it, um, but to really understand it. Um, but understand it from your own place. I think a lot of teachers make the, I'm, I'm not gonna read what it says. <laughs> a lot of teachers make the um, mistake of making kids think that there's only one meaning to a given poem. And part of what I'm trying to do with my kids is to help them see that um, their job is not to look for what I want them to get out of the poem, but to see what they get out of the poem. And with seventh graders, the first step to that is um, removing their uh, sense of awkwardness and sense of difference from their peers because they really just wanna fit in more than anything else. Um, every day I have an agenda and this is basically what we do. I tell them the agenda, we do attendance, we have some sort of group activity, then we do the poem of the day. Now I'm gonna move on quickly to what we do with that. Um, so the poem I'm gonna t that I'm gonna talk about is something that we did with my kids, which was uh, something by Tupac Shakur. Um, one thing that I do that helps introduce poems is I have a giphy of one of what the poet, of the poet speaking somewhere, if there's such a giphy, or I make one, um, and a little bit of information about the poet. Um, this is a particularly good giphy because, you know, Tupac. Um, then I show them the actual poem and I've been choosing really short ones because they don't really have the patience or the, um, what is it, uh, the, the, that word, <laughs> I can't remember the word, but it is, um, the staying power to stick with a long, long poem. They're just, they're just too scared of them. Um, so this is a simpler poem. Um, and we just read it aloud one time. And then the key thing there is that after we go over the poem, I have been using a program called Pear Deck. And the thing about Pear Deck is it gives people a chance to respond to questions without actually anyone else knowing what their response is, but they can still see everyone's response. So I'm going to go now to my template. So I, I have a few questions here. What does a flower need to grow? Why would it be hard for a rose to grow in concrete? What does a child need to grow physically and mentally and healthily strong? Um, what makes it difficult? I had them watch a video. 
But the key thing here is this. This is, I'm going to zoom in here. No, maybe I'm not going to zoom in. I guess I'm zooming now. Um, let me put it in the presentation mode view as present. So what you will see right here is I'm getting a bunch of answers over here from the kids. And this is happening in real time during our class. Um, it's like growing in concrete because of this. It's hard times. It makes you remember where I came from. Um, <laughs> how is your life like being in um, growing in concrete right now? I'm not getting much sun at all. I'm forgetting meals every now and then. It's terrible because there's so much work. The idea though is after they do this, then I share with them all of their different um, evaluations of the poem. And that's important for kids this age, specifically because they all think they're wrong. They don't seem to believe that they're right until they hear it from other people. And then if there is a kid who has a different um, interpretation of the poem, then there's a chance for me to celebrate their different answer. Um, so now let me see if I can get back to, oh my goodness. Ah, there we go. Um, so I was really happy with the answers that I got. And then ultimately we got to looking at the, mo the meaning of the poem, which is that you can still grow up well without having the best life. He's talking about how he grew up as a kid. There are people who have talent, no one will give them a chance. I think he's trying to say, there's some people who are that little flower that no one cares about and that they succeed in life. Now, this is not the kind of response I would get immediately from just giving them a poem and saying, read it, um, what do you think of it? And we certainly wouldn't get to these answers during an in-class discussion because nobody would respond. Um, so this has been incredibly helpful to me. Um, and then the last thing, let me see my head, my, oh, I'm going way too long. So the last thing, <laughs> <laughs> the last thing is um, I just wanted to big up the how to do PBL online from High Tech High. It's an online email only course to help you do larger projects um, like what I'm hoping to do, which is to make them create ultimately a news broadcast about um, good things that have happened despite this terrible time um, inspired by the one by John Krasinski. Sorry for going so long. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to unshare. Excellent. Thank you so much. So, uh, yes. Uh, Danielle, I'm going to give you the floor because you posted a question in chat. Um, yes, should I just say the question that I posted? Please, yes. Sure. So I have heard of Pear Deck. I've looked at it um, and it looks really, really cool because there are all of these different functions that kids can do, but I haven't actually used it mainly because I wasn't sure if kids need to be in the actual slideshow. Like, do you need to share the slideshow with the kids then they go in? Sorry? No, essentially what happens is um, you give them a login. It's kind of like Kahoot where they get a, a website to go to and then they get a code and then you can go through it um, with them at the same time. There's also a student driven mode. So what I do is I have a live class every morning for about half an hour and then I post the student driven version of it on our Google Classroom site so that later on other kids who weren't up or were in another class or doing something else, um, they can go through the same process and see everyone's answers the same way. Cool, thank you. Sure. Excellent. And I think you may have gotten at just a little bit of Jessica's question. Jessica, would you like to pose your question? Actually, yeah, I think uh, she might have answered it. Thank you. Um, I was just, yeah, I was wondering if you did these um, activities asynchronously or, uh, you know, they were all working at the same time, but you kind of already answered that. So thank you very much. Sure. <laughs> Although, actually, I did one more question. Um, sure. Sorry. If, um, so if the kids are posting on these comments, like would, would these comments be like built, like for the kids that are doing the student driven version of the Pear Deck, would they be able to see all the comments too? Yes. yes. Oh. Awesome. Thank you. Excellent. Other questions? Remember that you can use the raise your hand function. And all right, Rebecca. Okay. Let's have you close your question. Yeah, I just want to know if, um, if have you been getting them to, I'm sure uh, <laughs> the poetry, I, I love the fact that you were talking about how nervous they are about approaching poetry. Um, are you getting them also to write in response to any of those poems? Um, I'm, that is ultimately where I'm hoping to get them to. Right now, I'm just revving them up, getting them into this idea of there are possible good things that come out of this 
horrible, horrible time. Thank you, Ed. You have a question as well. Yeah, mine is a uh, very uh, nitpicky, but you said that it and it does block out the names of the people who are responding. But at, le at least on the version you showed us, it left a letter or two at the beginning. I'm just asking: is does it completely block it out, or is that just what? Uh, so what, there's actually I was showing you the teacher view of it. The kid view, um, you can't. See even anything. see a name that's all stuff the teacher view you can see their full names but oh okay um, just to you protect blocked. them here in this space I right you blocked blocked them out yeah okay thank you wonderful thank you so much um and i think let's go ahead and turn to our second presenter and our second presenter will be emily moore who teaches at stuyvesant emily take it away Hi. Um, well, it's nice to Zoom with all of you today. I teach, um, I teach three different sections. I teach a ninth grade um, core English class and a 10th grade core English class. And then I teach a poetry workshop class for juniors and seniors. Um, and I'm going to share two ideas um, just verbally, but I've uploaded the corresponding document in our potluck. Um, and I also, I have very uh, young, two very young children at home. So I, these ideas, the first one is this idea of the poet post assignment and it was aimed, uh, and I am in progress doing it, so I'll let you know how it develops, but the idea is to um, be, be a sustainable, functional unit um, for those of us who have a lot going on. Um, so here's the idea. Um, so this would be something, it's something I'm doing in my ninth grade English class, um, core English class, and the idea is that I'm posting every day for the next sort of two weeks. Oh, and I should say it's an adaptation of an assignment that some of you might be vaguely familiar with, which is the poet study, where they sort of like choose and present a poet and maybe they might do imitations or some other special pieces of it. But this idea is called Poet Posts. So every day for about two weeks, I'm gonna do um, some poet posts and the idea is introducing them to particular poets. So it might be like, you know, this is the poet Fatima Ashgar and here's a link to a TED talk that she did and here is a representative poem and a quote by her about her work. Um, and a few other little sort of pieces that would appear in a Google Classroom post. And then the idea is that um, they, in those two weeks, will choose and find a poet through something like poets.org, has a lot of really great, you can find like poems about dogs or poems about breaking up or um, poems about spring. So the idea is that they would choose a poet um, that's their special poet and they would let me know their special poet and my idea is that you nobody um, can sign up for the same poet. So it's going to sort of diversify them out. And then um, they would post um, their own poet posts. They would sign up. So five kids a day for about two and a half weeks. Um, and the idea is that they are then posting their poet posts. And mine have been the model. So you'll see I have it in the attached handout, but the idea, so I wrote it up, they provide a very brief biography, and I have a little language in there about um, how you can do that without plagiarizing. <laughs> um, and then they post a one representative poem and say why they chose it. They have one additional short quote. This is ninth grade English, so we're working on including textual evidence, you know, just using all those skills. And then they have two links um, and their explanation for why they chose that link. I chose a link to Fox Tama Ashgar's um, book, Halal If You Hear Me, because I liked the title, or I chose this video and I love what she says, you know, in minute one or something. Um, and then the idea is that the students reading it, then for the two weeks that kids are posting, students will read the five posts that come up in the day and they'll give one piece of positive specific feedback and they'll make sure that everybody gets at least a little bit of feedback. Um, and then I will email them separately with a note and a, and a grade, some sort of evaluative measure and I just I hope I'm in the middle of it now but I think that it will take the you know the it'll take the burden of the grading off and it will have a social import and it will have a special celebratory feeling and it's a way of connecting and it's not too much work on either side so that's the poet posts idea and then 
something else, this is just um, two, sort of two minutes at the end. I wanted to keep a record of this time as a writer, but I have no time, um, as I know you all are feeling. So, but I realized, and I also loved my little kids' posts on Google Classroom. I found them so moving in their funny little way. So I realized that I could just cut and paste the feed on Google Classroom, and then you can just delete all the little names and faces and avatars. and title it and it becomes this Google Classroom found poem and they're incredibly strange and moving and it's this really quick little record and I only do it if the feed is uh, there's something sort of sweet or going on in the feed and I posted in the potluck an example of one I gave my students my poetry workshop students I had them um, list places that they might want to write about that they missed or that they remember. And the list of places like just makes you cry. It's so beautiful. Um, so you'll see it in the potluck, but I just thought that was like a nice little creative option for some of us who are looking for ways to be creative in this totally insane moment. And I actually posted one of those in my poetry workshop. I worked, I talked about found poetry with them and I showed them what I had made of their um, stream. So it had a nice full circle aspect and was a nice way of lifting up their voices. So those are the two things I've been working on. <laughs> So let's open the floor to questions. Thank you so much. All right, Mari, you have your hand up. The, um, I don't use Google Stream, first of all, so I'm not exactly sure what that means, but are those just daily prompts or can you explain more where are you getting this um, yes. from and what kinds of things? Yes, and so on Google Classroom, um, yes, I'll give so with, I'll give a little prompt. So um, just as a way of checking in every day and measuring student engagement and also just hearing from them. Um, so yes, yeah, so for instance, um, I had well, on the day that my poetry kids did found poetry, I had them look around their workspace and write down one. Um, piece one source of found text that they could see from their workspace. So it was like okay. mm -hmm. Yes, and then from that is what I'm making my little found poems of just their little quick 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 entries Thank you Is that called Google stream? Is that what you're saying? I, I might have missed the term Oh, it's just I'm just naming a function of the Google classroom So in the Google classroom the teacher might do a post and then in the feed below the post the kids can respond they don't call it Google Stream, though. That's just an idea. Yes, yes, it's oh, not a technical yeah, thing. <laughs> Excellent. Other questions for Emily? Wonderful. All right, let's turn then to our third presenter. And Rebecca Barr teaches at Horace Mann School. Hi, everybody. Um, so yeah, I'm teaching a class. Hi, Fred. I've got some <laughs> her poetry meetup. We'll see you on Friday. <laughs> and uh, lots of other people who I have seen before. So um, my class is called Writing Nature. So it's obviously changed very much. <laughs> uh, we, the idea of this class is for, it's a senior elective and we read some essays and we'll read some poetry and I have them go out and write and there's been a lot of like, you know, every week I have them go out for a walk and write about what they see on their walk and how they're feeling. Oops, sorry. Everybody come out. Um, so once this happened, this obviously we had to do different things, but usually in the spring, uh, um, in this class, I'm teaching Whitman. A little bit of what we don't do everything but we do a bunch of sections from song of myself so um this class i'm going to actually ask you to all participate in some movement so i'd actually uh i'll just explain so the first thing i do with them we use that this time i'm using the 1855 version so i do a little choral work so um emily you'll, and we were in that workshop together and i think some of the rest of you have been in workshops where we've done some uh, choral and oral work and, and uh, 
giving voice to the poetry. So this is really about getting the words into your body. And all I do is, I do this also with the opening of the Odyssey, but I have them um, recite it, like they don't see the text first. I just have them repeat after me and I give an action to sort of every line. So you can do this if you feel comfortable doing this. Um, I've done a lot of Folger workshops and the Royal Shakespeare Society comes to our school and does stuff. So we've, I've had a lot of experience with this. But um, you can figure out, so you can either collaborate with your class and come up with a, a, an action for the, lot, for the lines that you're gonna do and you might just give them a word or two. So for instance, the opening to Song of Myself, I can join the 1855 version with a later version because I liked, um, I celebrate and sing myself. So you could do something like, okay, let's, one of the first words is celebrate, let's make an action for celebrate, right? So our first action, so I made up all the actions for this, but you could have the kids do it themselves. So our first action is I celebrate myself and then I sing myself. Okay? So I'm gonna teach you guys just what I did with my students and I'm gonna ask you to get up from your chairs and just, uh, you're gonna repeat after me and then we'll try and remember the first opening lines from Whitman, okay? So. Ooh, just stretch if you can't if you can't just sit down and do it it's fine but it's oh, it's fine. we're in front of things all the time all right so i'm gonna add, i'm gonna do your action do the actions and just repeat after me so i celebrate myself and I celebrate, myself. Myself. I celebrate myself i celebrate myself, with celebrate myself. myself. <laughs> <laughs> and what i assume you shall assume what, what I assume, I assume you shall assume. For every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. For every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. Good, okay. Then the next lines are, um, I loaf and invite my soul. I loaf and invite my soul. My soul. I lean and loaf at my ease. I, I lean and loaf, loaf, loaf at my, at my ease. ease. Observing a spear of summer grass. Observing a spear of summer grass. Of grass. grass. Excellent. Okay, I'm gonna try and get you guys to do a little, bit, like, a little bit longer section. I'll do it first and then you guys can go. So I celebrate myself and I, sing I, myself I, I, and what I assume you shall assume for every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. I'll do it with you. One, oh two, three. I celebrate I myself, celebrate myself sing and myself. sing myself, sing myself. And, what I assume, and what I assume you shall assume, assume. for every, every atom belonging to me as good, good belongs, belongs to you. To you. Yeah. you guys are so good. Okay, then I'll just do that over the next two lines and you guys will do them together. I loaf and invite my soul. I, I lean loaf. And loaf at my ease, observing a spear of summer grass. I, I loaf, loaf and invite my soul. I lean and loaf, loaf at my ease, at my observing, ease. observing a spear of summer grass. <laughs> Some grass. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Oh, you know, let me. I love that. <laughs> really good. Well, I start the day. Now my seniors are at eight twenty-five in the morning, so they're quite resentful. Wow. They're there. Oh wow! <laughs> Gets them up and doing something. So I try and build on that. I've got like a couple more lines. So usually at the end of the sort of Whitman period, we would go out and um, perform this on the field. And then we would chalk Whitman lines. We, one of the other assignments I give them is to gather all their Whitman, favorite Whitman lines in the sections that we've read. So they'll have like 15 to 20 lines and I'd say go out and I get, have a big thing of chalk and they go and scrawl the lines that they like all over campus. So we have this little Whitman celebration. So we're bringing our class to the community. Now, um, I have, I sent my thing to you, Renee. I was trying to figure out, I can't, but I just wanted to tell you some of the other things that have worked well, even in the Zoom world. Um, so we did, you know, so we did our, our choral work and do that a couple of days. You know, you can talk about the opening, the images, the tone, the speaker. Then I read sections uh, sort of one through three and then four through five. And I had students 
right back to Whitman. So it's not an analysis. It's just like right back. And we've been doing a lot of poetry. So they're in the groove. They're not, there's no fear. They're just like, oh yeah, this is Miss Farley. This is what she does. <laughs> you can either write back or, um, or draw. So I just wanted to show you guys. I'm going to see if I can do this. So here's an image of like, work. Okay, it's sideways, but I think you can still see it. So this is, I think, section three, the talkers, and then there's a little picture of Walt, there's a flower, that stuff. So some really nice um, drawings. And let me see if there's a, so you get the picture with that. Um, and then some really nice poems that have been coming back. But I wanted to tell you about section six too, because section six of Whitman's Song of Myself is one of my favorites. It's a child said, what is the grass? So obviously, normally we'd be going out onto the lawn, sitting down and like literally all together observing the grass. So the assignment was, if possible, and this was last Friday or Thursday or Friday, I think, um, if possible, go outside and experience the grass if you can safely do that. Um, and Sunday, of course, was the gorgeous 60 odd day, uh, 60 degree day. So I said, write down your close observation of the glass, the colors, the shape, the size, the texture, you know, individual blades versus like the, the grassy lawn that you're on. What are your, and then what are your emotions, your experiences, your memories? So have to do a little writing like that. And um, then if you couldn't, I said, <laughs> just put up some pictures of grass and maybe write about your memory of being on the grass again. Um, and then read Whitman out loud two times. So whether you're with somebody, but you know, just read the, what is the grass thing? and then try and take some notes and everything. So we shared, um, we shared a couple of those and I just wanted to share you one because it was very, I mean, they're all lovely, but um, let me see if I can find. Oops, sorry. There. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, this, yeah, this is, so everybody can see this? No, we're good. Okay, so this is one of my students. If I could touch the grass, I'd do what the child in me urges my body to reach. Two, it urges my body to reach out and barely place my hand on top, inching it back and forth to scratch and stimulate the 10 year old soul in me that yells at my friends not to rip the blades from the ground. They used to take handfuls and throw them into each other's hair. The tickles electrify my arm as I pull my hand up to the point where I can barely feel the spikes on my palm. I'd sink my roots into the grass and share our time. I'd roll onto my stomach and stare, blade down without breaking eye contact to see who would win. Though sitting in my car now, like passing by 50 miles per hour, I wish for the interaction with nature more intimate than the wind I produce that rustles it. So they, so they did some really great, great work. Um, and then we're just gonna finish up. I'm, instead of chalking, which uh, we can't do as a group, I'm gonna ask them in the next week or two when we finish to uh, take their lines that they love and if they can go out on a sidewalk and chalk, chalk it up and try and see what people's reactions are. And if they can't, if they're stuck inside, I'm just gonna ask them to write on a piece of paper, like separate pieces of paper and post their Whitman lines all around the apartment and see if they can have a conversation with maybe somebody in their family about any of the lines. So that's, um, and we also just, so you guys know, we also, I had them watch an online documentary about Whitman, a 1988 version, which is kind of hilarious because you see a young Allen Ginsberg and a fairly young um, Harold Bloom. <laughs> <It's> like, <"Ugh." laughs> Uh, so that's, those are a couple of things I've done. The one other thing that was kind of fun, I had them in breakout rooms, um, I think take section three and read them to each other. It was all, I just want them to have the words in their mouths. Um, so they read, you know, urge, 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 the broken urge of the world. And, you know, it's like, read it passionately. And so I dropped in on them and they were doing it. <laughs> so it's been fun. I've been, I'm not the most technologically savvy person in the world. Uh, so it's uh, been hard for me to Zoom. And with the seniors, I'm only meeting twice a week because they can't really do much more than that right now. So that's some of the Whitman stuff I've been doing. Oh, 
Thank you so much. All right, let's open the floor for questions. This is actually a comment, but I, I want to thank you very much for that, Rebecca. That's really excellent. And uh, just that whole physical thing is fantastic. I, I'm an, also an ESL teacher. Um, and I just want to add that there's a there's methodology for ESL called total physical response, which is very similar. And it's a, a perfect memory aid. It really, when you do things with your body, it really can expand your memory exponentially and your understanding of things. It gives you a whole different you know, physical, proprioceptive, you know, um, yeah. perspective. So I just really, I love what you just did. I, I'm already, you know, memorized pretty much. I know. With things, but it's just know. really fun. And it's, it, you know, especially now where everyone's all cooped up. I think it's yeah. a really fantastic way to get people out of their comfort zone, but they're in their house. So come on, you know, so yeah. I just love it. And Thank they've you. got a little bit of poetry with them like the rest of their life. They won't forget it, you know, and I have, so I do this with the open the invocation of the Odyssey too, and I have seniors. You know, I teach that in tenth grade. I have seniors who always come up to me like, I still remember, and they can recite the whole twelve lines. And I'm like, yes, you will take this with you through your life. You have Homer. You now you have Whitman. <laughs> Fantastic. And and Nakomo, that begins to answer your question. Would you like to pose it for the group? Yeah, I'm. I'm wondering how you choose your the poems and if you could perhaps point us in direction of more physically useful or physically appropriate, I don't know what the word is, physical poems. Gestures. <laughs> Gestury pro poems. Gestures, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I've had a lot of experience with this in different poems and a lot of times once we've done it chorally, sorry, the sun is, once we've done it chorally, like I, it's easier for me, especially with younger kids, really any age group just to do the first one with us so i like you know for whitman i just love the first couple lines like the first segment section one and then i pick and choose the lines that i like so so and then I, sometimes i've had students um once we've done some ones together where i've already chosen the the gestures then i'll let them choose gestures and we'll, as a group, we'll decide on a gesture. So, I mean, you know, one of the other lines is stop this day and night with me, you know, but, and you shall possess the origin of all poems. So, you know, they might want to do the origin of all poems, right? You know, so you can get them to, to maybe in groups, come up with some gestures and obviously, you know, <laughs> keep it clean. <laughs> um, the other things that I've done, like, as long as we do a poem, I mean, it's usually just poems that I like, that I have a connection to that I think works well but then if we do I'll, I'll break them up into groups in when we're in class um and they will do or maybe we'll do like a shakespeare sonnet and they'll take two lines in pairs or maybe a small group of four and they'll come up with a gesture themselves they the, the rule is like they have to come up with two three gestures at most and perform it chorally so that it's all community and collaborative uh too so it's it's fun. It's really fun. And you just take it slow and you take one poem that you like and you can give them each a line and ask them in pairs to come up with one gesture for, for or two gestures for two different words that you're going to do. So. Wonderful. And I noticed that Carolyn and Fred have posted in the chat a few uh, a few suggestions of their own. So thank you very much, as has Kathleen. Other other questions? If you can put it in the Google Drive, but I, I do have, I just have, I wrote out exactly what I wrote to my students about their their work to go out and experience the grass. So it should be in the potluck folder. Yep, I will put it in the potluck folder. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much to our three presenters. We are